Hello my friends, welcome to What's On My Face, where I tell you everything that's on my face in this week's episode of What's Up In Makeup. Let's start where I started, which was face primer. So for face primer today, I use the Cover FX Illuminating Primer. This I've been using since October, on and off, and this is an illuminating primer, just like it says. It does what it says it's gonna do. It's gonna give you that glow from within kind of look but only if you use it with a satin finish foundation. If you use this with a dewy foundation, oh my goodness, girlfriend, people are gonna see your glow from the moon. Like, it, you will look shiny. <laughs> it's gonna look bad. So don't use it with a luminous foundation. Make sure you're using this with either a satin finish or if you have oily skin, maybe even a matte finish foundation. It might give you that little extra touch of glow uh, that you may enjoy. So definitely recommend this. It definitely makes my makeup stay on longer and it is a more of a moisturizer kind of feeling rather than a silicone kind of feeling so if you like that then you'll probably really like this I would imagine this would be best for people with normal to dry skin rather than oily skin but oily skin girls you may like it too I don't know I have normal skin and I love it so that's my opinion straight up how I feel about that let's go ahead and move on to my eye primer now this is one that I I, I did not like this product when I first got it. This is the Kat Von D Color Correcting Eyeshadow Primer in Fair. And my expectations for Kat Von D products are very, 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 very high because of her, the quality of her eyeshadows, quality of her old formula of her blushes. I just think that she can do amazing things. And I think she's an amazing person. So when I get a Kat Von D product, I expect it to be wonderful. Now, when I first got this, it went on very, 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 very patchy. And I was like, what is going on? And then when I blended it, it with my fingers it completely blended away so I tried blending it with a beauty sponge I tried blending it with a brush and just nothing was making this work now that I've had this open for a week or two I like it a lot better um, maybe it was like a film on the outside of the product that was making it just not work very well I do like it a lot better but here's a kicker on this it is not as opaque as let's say Urban Decay's Primer Potion in Eden or Max Paint Pot in Painterly or Soft Ochre it's very translucent in it's finished so just be aware of that uh, it does make my eyeshadow stay on just a bit longer but I don't think that it is worth the $28 or whatever this cost price tag it's just way too much for something that's not really that amazing get Urban Decay's Primer Potion in Eden or get one of those MAC paint pots those things are fabulous for foundation today I use the product from Miraness now Miraness is an Australian brand that I've liked some things from in the past so I like to try things from them every once in a while when they're on Holt look this is the Flawless Revolution Anti-Aging 3-in-1 24-Hour Skin Perfecting SPF 15 Foundation. Now, that sounds like a physician's formula name. It's so long. Now, one thing is just the packaging overall. Now, when they show you the picture on the website, of course, it doesn't look like this, all mushy. It looks like this, all beautiful, right? And then there's a little note when you get it that says, you know, product may mix some, you know, in shipping. So it's like... Why put this little glass here with this thinking that it's going to be beautiful and then see a hot mess? That's like when if you go into a restaurant and you know how they have those open kitchens and you just see mess everywhere. It's like don't have an open kitchen then if you're going to have mess everywhere. <laughs> You know what I mean? It just, I was disappointed in that. That was just a little weird. Uh, as far as the actual formula of this, there's nothing extraordinary about this. It is a light to medium coverage depending on how you build it. I haven't seen any of these claims on here, particularly for me. It says line smoothing. No. Uh, it says pore, re pore refining primer. I don't really have large pores, so I can't speak to that one. And it also says sheer color corrector. Uh, it definitely did not color correct any redness that I had. I actually had to do some redness touch-up touch-ups at the very end of my getting ready. So this definitely did not work with that. Um, I don't don't think this is worth the full price price tag on this. I'm not even sure if it was worth the sale price that I got on Holo. Look. So, you know. Just kind of an okay product. Mm -hmm. So the idea for eyeshadow today was I was supposed to be using the Sweet Peach Palette, but I had a little problem. <laughs> I, I, I did get to order it the original launch on Too Faced.com. I did end up getting through before I went to work the day that it launched, and uh, I was very excited to have gotten it, but I was going so fast, I accidentally had it shipped to my old address that I lived at uh, back in July. So, 
I fixed that today. They're going to set, ship me another one, so I'm really excited about that. Thumbs up for the customer service over at Too Faced. They really helped me out a lot with that. So I was like, well, what's next best to the peach palette and trying that out? Let's just use the original chocolate bar palette. So the chocolate bar palette I've said before, if I could make myself into an eyeshadow palette, it would be the chocolate bar palette. <laughs> this is the most me eyeshadow palette ever. Of course, it smells like chocolate. Everybody that has heard of it knows that it smells like chocolate. It smells great. Uh, some of the shades in here do not work for me. The, one, the biggest one that does not work for me is this one here called Candied Violet. It just straight up grays out on me. It's terrible. It's a terrible shade. Uh, unless you want a gray. <laughs> it's definitely not purple. But some of the standout shades here for me are Creme Brulee and Marzipan. Those are two of my favorites here. Oh, I'm not holding it up high enough. Creme Brulee and Marzipan are two of my standout favorites. I also really like Champagne Truffle. Uh, Amaretto is great. I mean, there's, there's a lot of really wonderful shades in here. The shades I used today, I used uh, Hazelnut from here over on my lid. I used Creme Brulee from here over this way on my lid. I used Marzipan as a little bit of a highlight over here. I used Milk Chocolate up in the crease. And then I used uh, Truffle Fudge to deepen up the outer corner. Uh, I also used White Chocolate to kind of blend out my brow bone. So that was how I used this today. But there is a big pop a shimmer right there. And I'm gonna tell you what that is. That did not come from the chocolate bar palette. That came from Artist Couture by Angel. And this is the Diamond Glow Powder in Conceited. What I did was I took this with a little drip of Kiko Mixing Solution. If you can get your hands on this stuff, this stuff is amazing. It's like Max Fix Plus, but way, 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 way cheaper. Put a drip of this on your brush, put it in a mineral eyeshadow, and it really makes it pop. So that pop of color right there is this. It's a wonderful, wonderful eyeshadow as far as giving you that pop of glitter. This is supposed to be a highlighter. Um, I do not use this as a highlighter. It is way too glowy for me. It is, um, it's sparkly. It's straight up sparkly. If I wore this to work, my boss would look at me like I was insane. Like what, why do you have glitter on your face? Like, are you a fairy? Like what? So I would recommend this for people that go out clubbing, for people that have a lot of events to go to where they need a glow, people that like to take pictures on Instagram, things like that, but for the everyday wear, this is just very glittery. Unless that's your thing, girlfriend. If that's your thing, go so for it. Speaking of eyes, you may have noticed I'm wearing false eyelashes, which I never wear. I was at Target today with my daughter, and I, I I saw these, and I was like, oh my goodness. Like, I need to just start. I need to just suck it up, try some lashes. They look so beautiful on so many people. I need to just suck it up. So I got on Periscope. My para loves over there, that my community over on Periscope, helped me to do this. I am not a beauty guru, okay? The para loves helped me put this together. I would not look like this if it weren't for that. Them. They tell me where to blend. They tell me how to put on my lashes. And it was a fight, but we did it together. Special shout out to Nikki6543 on Instagram and also Nikki6543 at blogspot.blogspot.com. She was the major player in helping me apply these. But so many people, like I can't even list all of the names of people that uh, helped me to put these lashes on. I mean, just thank you so much to all of you for all your advice. So enough about the story about me putting them on. Let me tell you what I think of them. Uh, it does come with a like, lash glue and two lashes. I'll show you what they look like right there in the box when they're actually in there. Uh, this is the more wild one, uh, the, the bigger lash. I kind of ruined the first one by clipping off both sides and everybody was trying to tell me not to do it, but I wasn't looking. I was too busy cutting and I ruined the one pair. So now we've got the big ones on. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, they were relatively easy to go on. Uh, the lash glue was not the best. Uh, it def I had to reapply them a couple times because the inner corner was not sticking. So just be aware of that. I think they were 10 bucks for the pair, which is not too bad for uh, drug drugstore lashes. It's not bad. So um, yeah, if they call to you, I would recommend them, sure. Yeah. Keep it going with the eyes. I use the Ico. That's where I draw the line. I do liquid eyeliner. This is a marker tip eyeliner. It goes on very black, very smooth, very opaque. Um, the wing though, that wing though, it rubs off. <laughs> it mushes, it rubs off, like it stays on the lash line fine. They say it's waterproof. I don't think that it's waterproof because it doesn't take much to, to rub it off. I mean, it's really pretty easy to get off. So just be aware of that if you get that. And then the mascara I used underneath my lashes was the Steal a Huge Mascara 
really, really like this mascara. Um, it has kind of a better than sex mascara hourglass shaped form to it. The formula is amazing. It's so good. I can't believe I haven't heard more people talking about this. I think it's because Stila is just generally a brand that a lot of people don't really talk about, but I really like this mascara. I, I, I'm so in love with drugstore mascaras that it's hard for a high-end mascara to impress me and make me think that I may want to pay a high-end price. If any mascara was going to make me pay a high-end price, it was going to be this one. And I've tried a lot of high-end mascaras, but this one is pretty stinking awesome. Length, volume, no flaking. I mean, it's just it beats a lot of my drugstore mascaras, and that takes a lot to do. Eyebrows today, I use the It Cosmetics Brow Power Universal Eyebrow Pencil. It is a very nice brow pencil. Goes on a little bit hard. It's a little hard. It's not as creamy as, let's say, the Anastasia Brow Wiz or the L'Oreal Brow Definer, uh, but it works. It's nice. I like that it has a spoolie on the ends. Uh, it is a little thicker of a tip than the Anastasia Brow Wiz, so be aware of that. If I had to choose between the two, I would pick the Anastasia one over this one just because I think it's a little easier to apply, but it's not a bad brow product. It's just not a great brow product. Moving on to cheeks, the blush that I used today was the Baked Gelato Vivid Swirl Blush in Papaya by Laura Geller. If you can find any of these Laura Geller swirly products. They're all, all the ones I've ever tried are really, really good. The highlighters, the blushes, they're super, super pigmented. Uh, they stay on all day long. They're just beautiful. They're easy to work with. They build very nicely. Just a really nice, nice product. You don't go straight to clown face. And if you do put a little too much, it's really easy to blend without blending the product away. It's just a really nice formula. I highly recommend it. All right, the NYX Cream Highlight and Contour Palette. It's taken a little warming up for me to like this product. Uh, one thing to keep in mind is that when you don't use this, the, the top layer will dry. So you have to kind of break through a layer of dryness before you get to the workable product underneath. It's not hard to do. You just have to rub your finger a little bit on it and you'll get to the good product. This product is a little difficult to work with in that it takes some blending. Like you have got to, especially with the contour, like get some elbow grease in there to blend out the contour. It takes a little while. It goes on very, very thick. Um, and it, it just it just takes some work. Um, the highlight is a little less work. Uh, you, I use a small stippling brush from e.l.f. to apply this, and I really like that a lot. I also use today the uh, this one here. This I use as an under eye brightener, and I like the way that that looks. So I'll show you my cheek kind of so you can see the highlight there. You can see the brightener here, and you can see the contour there. And overall, I really like the look. It's just taken me a while to kind of get used to how this product works. But now, after using it quite a bit, I actually really like it. And then to finish it all off, I used the Tarte Smooth Operator Finishing Powder. This is a really nice finishing powder. It gave me enough matte to make me happy, but left a little bit of that dewy glow from the primer that I really wanted. So I really like this. It helps my makeup stay on a lot longer, and it just it's a nice finishing powder. It does exactly what a finishing powder is supposed to do. It just brings the whole look together, mattifying the face just a little bit, but I feel like it gave me like a nice satin finish. And I really like this product. God, it's awesome. It's really, really good. And I don't, I don't, I don't brag about Tarte that often. So when I'm saying something good about Tarte, you know it's good. And then the last thing I used was thanks to my friend Yesenia over at Yesenia Cuevas on YouTube. She is my friend that I went to the Bite Beauty Lab in New York City. I went with her after Generation Beauty and we had a blast making our own lipstick. So this is the lipstick that I created. Um, having the person behind the counter, she mixed everything for me uh, and we went a little this way, a little that way, trying to get a color that I really liked. And this is the one we ended up with. So this has no name and this is not something you can purchase. But if you're ever at in New York City and you have some money to blow on a lipstick, it really is a fun experience. I don't think I'll do it again just because of the price tag of it, but it really is fun. It is fun. I was glad I did it once, but I don't think I'll do it again just because it was so I was thinking expensive. This is the old formula though. This isn't the Amuse Bouche line. This is the old formula. So I haven't tried the Amuse Bouche line. I'll let you know if I try one what I think of that, but I haven't yet. So that's it for what's on my face this week. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel by clicking the button next to 
me or the button down below if you're on mobile. And if you haven't seen What's Up in Makeup today, you can click on the link over on the right hand side of the screen or the link down below will take you there. Another thing you can click on is if you want to see a mystery video. I have a mystery video that you can find by clicking on my face if you're on laptop or desktop or click on the mystery link down below and it'll take you to an old video of mine that you've probably never seen. So I think it'll be fun for you to check it out. I try to pick ones that I think will be a nice flashback to the way my channel used to be a long, long time ago. And it's just fun to see where the channels come from there, you know, and, and my opinions of things back then that have changed quite a bit. So I want to thank you so much for spending part of your day with me. It really, truly means so much to me. Mad love, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!